Hello everyone, welcome to lecture number 4 of my course, and in this lecture we're going to be getting to know the Scratch Editor, also known as the Scratch IDE, and IDE, by the way, stands for Integrated Development Environment. And the reason why it's important to know what IDE means, before we go any further, is that in a lot, if not most, if not all, programming languages actually use the term IDE for the editor that you use for, you know, testing, compiling, and running code. Now, we'll get more to what I mean by that later, you know, as in testing, running code, but um, as far as this lecture goes, we're just going to go over the interface of the editor or IDE, but I'm just going to call it the editor for the remainder of this course, because Scratch does not refer to it as an IDE, although it is a good term to know, so if you're taking notes, I'd write that down, because you're going to need to know that term if you choose to continue your programming career. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. So at the top, we have this header here, very familiar to what we had on the home page. The My Stuff button and drop down is the exact same. Here we can go back to the home page. We can change the language. There's many languages to choose from. I'm just going to go with American English for the entirety of this course, but you can do that for whatever you're most comfortable with. There's two drop downs here for file and edit. We can create a new project, save the current project, or duplicate the current project. We can also load a project from the computer, such as from the offline editor, or save it, uh, you know, downloading it, uh, downloading one from the online editor to the offline editor. So you can switch between them locally, back and forth, just like that. Our edit drop down is going to have restore, and we're not going to mess with that too much. If you want a more detailed explanation, you can go to the Scratch wiki on that. In turbo mode, we are going to work with quite a bit, but that'll be much later in this course. But please do not turn this on, or else you'll get different results than me whenever we're testing programs and code. Here's the tutorials tab. This is great for certain explanations and, you know, for very specific concepts or very specific things within the editor, but I would not recommend using those alongside the course, maybe outside of the course, just so things don't overlap. You'll learn something ahead of time uh, in the course. You'll learn something ahead of time in the tutorials and or something just won't make sense since you're learning in two ways at the same time. So I would just ignore this for now, even though it's a great resource if you choose to come back there in the future. But I would still recommend going to the Scratch Wiki as the number one source for getting stuck and what happens if you get stuck. Now, here's the name of the project, Untitled 2. There's already a project named Untitled, so it just uses a naming mechanic to go hyphen and then next number, so two. And the project page, we aren't going to be messing with that just yet, but we are going to be doing that soon. Yep. Now, so if we go to our left side of the screen here, there's three tabs. And I'll, I'll break down each of these tabs for you. So all these blocks you're going to learn how they do in the next section. You're going to learn what all of these are. And it looks like there's a lot, but they're really actually not that difficult. And a lot of them are fairly similar. And I think you'll really enjoy that section of the course whenever we start programming using all of these. Uh, the second tab is for art. And the third tab is for music and sound effects. So you've got code, art, and sounds. And that's all it is. So here, this big blank space in the middle is our editor where we can actually drag and drop these blocks together. So I can drag and drop, drag and drop, and so on. And we'll go over more about how this works and what these are for later very soon. But I wouldn't play around with that too much just yet because right now we're just going over the editor. And another thing I want to point out is that you can save either here, it'll save automatically very frequently, or you can also save right here. But always make sure you save before leaving the page. It should say project saved or nothing up there if you're all good to go. Now, let me go over this this part over here on the right side of the screen. So if we had some code that we wanted to test, we could click this green flag and our code would run and we can stop the code with this stop sign. And it'll be actually highlighted by this uh, blue border uh, if it's while it's running. But since there's no code to run, it's just automatically stopping itself as soon as we run it. And this full screen button is to uh, is to enlarge the screen where we can view our tested code on. And I'll click the same button to get out of it. Uh, these two buttons are for if you want more room for editing, just like so. And I definitely prefer the bigger one because it's just, uh, I find that if you need more room, what's better is in the bottom right here, you can have this, there's a magnification, a zoom out, and a equal button so just to put this in perspective I'll drag a block over I can zoom in I can zoom out and if I don't know where the default was and I kind of like zoomed out a bunch or zoomed in a bunch and I just want to set it back I can click the equal and I'll go to the default size so that that's what I like to do if I start running out of room and we won't get into sprites 
and costumes or stages and backdrops in this lecture. We will definitely start to get into that in the following lecture, so lecture number five. But this is, again, this is essentially just a basic walkthrough of the lecture. So here's, here's what's really important also, is there's a full screen mode, and for Google Chrome, it's F11. And I'm actually gonna be in full screen for the remainder of this course. However, uh, the full screen button depends on your browser, uh, if that feature is even available, but, and it's entirely up to you whether you want to do it, but just to make the screen a little bit simpler, I'm going to be using full screen. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the backpack. And so what the backpack does, I'll just, uh, you know, I can click on this backpack button to, uh, to pull it out and I can put it back by clicking the button again. And I, I usually keep it out of the way by just having it uh, at the bottom of the screen. But basically what this does is this can transfer project assets back and forth between projects. So this is in this this is the same backpack no matter where I am. And that's all you need to know right now. We'll get back to that later in case you're wondering what a project asset is. All that is is like a piece of code, maybe a sound effect or a piece of art from a project. And you can basically transfer them between projects using this backpack. Again, we'll get uh, more into this later, and we'll see how this is very useful later in this course. So without uh, that said, I look forward to seeing you in Lecture 5, and I can't wait to join you there.